Hello and welcome everyone to another Brighter Graphics Blue Bee Me Up webinar. Sean is traveling this week, so I get the honor of kicking things off again this month as we talk about creating reports from your markups list. <clears throat> so let's dive right in and get started. My name is Troy DeGroat. I am the Blue Bean Professional Services Director at U Chapter 2, and I'm excited to partner with the team at Brighter Graphics to deliver world-class Bluebeam training and customization services, empowering you to get the most out of your Bluebeam investment. This month's webinar is focused on one of the most powerful yet underutilized functions in Bluebeam Review. Whether you ignore it while it automatically populates or you completely customize it to process the data you need, the markups list is something to pay attention to. Today we're going to show you a few examples of how we can create reports from your markups list. Because this webinar talks about just one feature, it's going to be a little shorter than the others, but just like our training, we're going to get straight to the point and be done so you can get back to work practicing what you've learned. So what are other Bluebeam users doing with the markups list data? We can create legends to display information directly on the drawings. For many, doing tendering or material takeoffs, we can export to a CSV to further process the information, adding formulas for labor or material costs. Others export the markups list to a CSV to clean and reformat before uploading into their existing estimating programs. Some might want to exchange data between computer systems such as websites, databases, and third-party applications choosing an XML report. In a snagging list, design review, or council review, PDF reports can be generated and shared across the construction team. Or some may simply want to directly print the report. So let's dive into Bluebeam and show some examples. Okay, here we are in Bluebeam. I've got a drawing where I've marked up some materials. We've got the area of some storefront glass over here, some joints. Uh, I've got area measurements for the um, field installation and the fabrication so that they can get their labor costs from that overall area. And what I've done here is create a legend to give the data that I need directly on the page. So that there's a few different ways that we can create this legend on the sheet. If you want to create a legend of just the materials that are in a tool set, you can go to the gear or the properties for that tool set. Go down to legend and create new legend. And then go ahead and drop that on the sheet and it's going to report what's uh, directly on the sheet or the entire document depending on how you set this up. So here you can see I've got my counts for curtain wall joints and storefront joints. All of those markups are over here. And you'll also notice that when I created this legend, all of my joint materials came off of the existing legend that I had on here. Bluebeam will only allow those quantities to be in one legend, so you don't double up your quantities accidentally. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, the way that I generated this one, let me just undo that to show you it included everything. Another way that you can create these is to select the materials, whether it's on the drawing or in the markups list. Right click, go down to legend and create a new legend. And that will give you a legend for just the materials that you had selected. So here you can see again, I've got all of those quantities for just the curtain wall. And this one happens to be for the storefront over here. So legends are a great way for you to get your quantities onto the sheet. So when you print that, you can see that in the field. Another example is with snagging lists. 
Uh, here you can see in this example you may have seen in a previous webinar I created a legend for the different markups so this structural group we've got all the symbols that were used what they mean and the comments built into those the same thing for mechanical electrical and plumbing so I can create those for each of those individual disciplines so that they can see they're separate from everybody else so same concept just a different application for those another option for creating a report I'm going to go back to my window assemblies here and all of our summaries or reports can be found here at the top of our markups list so if you not familiar with the interface as you go down to the bottom we've got this blue line if you drag that up that's going to expose the markups list and every time you do a markup up on the top it generates a line item in the list for that markup another way to open this is to click on these little three dots over here that will open up our markups list as well so once this is open, you can look at the summary here, click on there, you'll see your different options, the CSV, XML, PDF, and print. So let's talk about a few of these. A CSV export, if I click on that, our export window pops up and how these are gonna work, and they're all pretty similar, you can go to the columns tab here select which columns you want to include in your summary so that's the columns across here if you don't want all of them that's okay just uncheck those then come over to your filter and sort and you can tell it to sort by space or subject or whatever you want that to be sorted by you can also filter out different markups as well if you want to filter out all the curtain walls and just keep the storefront you can do that in here with the sort and filter then we jump over to our output CSV of course tell it where you want that to export to give it a file name and you can look through the settings in here and apply what's important to you. Uh, the ones, the major ones I wanna point out when you're exporting to a CSV, so an Excel file, is we can include markups, which is going to give us um, each individual markup, each line item. Or we can do the totals, which will group all the similar um, similar objects so curtain wall glass one all of these different glass one markups would group together and give you a total instead of the individuals or you can do markups and totals so i'm pointing this out because i want you to be careful on what information you're including in that export so a couple different ways that i've seen people use this sometimes they'll export their markups and then they'll work with that excel file to enter in formulas for labor and cost and things like that they'll sort and filter within the excel file that's perfect just fine so determine what you want to export there others i've worked with will export and import the excel file into an existing estimating software so the excel file is just temporary they need to export the pdf information into a language that their estimating software understands if that's the case that's where you want to be careful whether you're doing markups totals or markups and totals because as you can imagine here if you do markups and totals you're going to double all your quantities if you forget to delete those total rows in your excel file so be careful of that uh, i'm going to go ahead and open file after creation and from here i can just click ok before i do that if i do all this setup 
and it's a consistent export every time, I wanna make sure I save that configuration and share it with my team. They can load it, get exactly the same results you have without having to set it up every single time. Okay, save that configuration, and we're just gonna hit OK. <clears throat> That's gonna open up Excel for me. Drag that up here, and you can see here I've got all of that information from my markups list in my Excel file. Okay, so whether you use it directly from here, you copy and paste that into your existing workbook, or you import this into your estimating software. Uh, I've seen others um, use Power Query to run macros and clean things up very quickly uh, lots of really cool stuff that i've seen happening out there so that's our csv whether you want it in excel or you're importing it into an estimating software like i talked about next let's go in here again and talk about the xml so if you're going to tie this information to a website or other applications you can do an xml format so in here all the same settings that you can have here markups and totals i'm going to go ahead and click ok here it's going to open up that xml formatted document and for those of you that are looking to do that, you probably know what this means. I do not. Um, so it is an option um, if you know what to do with that. Next up is our PDF summary. So again, I do that a lot with design review between teams, um, city or council, uh, permit, reviews things like that so if i jump over to my snagging list again and i've got all of these different markups uh, i might come in here and do a pdf summary come over to my columns and i'm going to include all this information's good filter and sort i'm going to sort mine by space so that it groups all the everything per room so each room it's going to report it uh, i am also going to filter um, the layers and i only want to i'm just going to go ahead and do mechanical so i'm not doing the full list i'm only going to include mechanical by space output PDF now one of my favorite check marks here is the append and hyperlink to current PDF when I check that it's going to add the report to this drawing document so the second page and so on if I don't have this checked it's going to create a brand new document the other thing that it does when it appends to this drawing is it hyperlinks our markups in our report to the markups on the drawings i'll show you what that looks like in a second so i'm going to append that uh, put in my title here i can also load i can import my letterhead so here i brought in my letterhead and my report's going to be directly printed onto that um, i can create a space or a, a break per space or subject or anything like that. You can look through all these settings here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run that. Okay, so here's my report. You can see it brought in my letterhead up at the top. I've got all of my markups here, page by page. And when I zoom in on one of these, here's all the information from the markups list. Here's an image of that markup. Um, let's see. 
This is a little bit better example. It gives you some of the context of the drawing itself. So you can see where that is. Um, but what that box, what that preview is, is a hyperlink. And when I click on that, it's gonna jump directly to that markup on my drawing. So I can reference those very, very quickly. When I look at my thumbnails over here, you can see I've got my drawing and three pages from that report. The last page in the report, so the first page here, you can see one of my line items has an uh, image. If I look at the last page, I have a capture media summary, which includes the image. So I can download this image from here. It's that um, image lives in the PDF, so I don't have to send it separately. It comes through in my PDF summary. And then of course the last option here is the print summary. So we can come in, send this directly to a printer if we want to and print out all of this data similar to the other formats that we looked at. So that's all I have to cover today for creating reports. I'm gonna jump back into my PowerPoint So thanks for hanging out again this month. As always, you can reach out to the team at Brighter Graphics for technical support or other resources. Uh, reach out if you need any customization or training. We'd be happy to work with you. Um, as you can see, there are several places where you can reach out here listed on the slide. Website, email, phone number across the bottom. And last, with that, I want to thank you for being part of the Blue Beam Me Up series for over a year now. As this series comes to an end, we've been working on some really exciting things coming up, including a few on-demand training courses, so you can elevate your, skill, your skills when it fits your own schedule. Thanks for joining, and have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everybody.